Gabriel McSharry, nutritionist and medical herbalist. A safe and effective approach to your health condition. Call the clinic on 071 9142 940. Gabriel, thanks a million uh, for joining me this morning. Good morning, Margaret. Yeah, that's you sorting out the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> we had to get you to come in to us because we can't catch up with, with Maria, who was due on just before you. But anyway, um, Gabriel, you, you've been away for, for a few weeks. and I have, yeah. I've been away and um, I was actually uh, doing some training with uh, a doctor in England. Her name is Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. And she's written a book on... Um, it's called Gut and Psychology Syndrome. And okay. It's, um, she's written it a, f- a few years ago now, maybe over five, but a bit of background to her. Um, she had a, a, ch- a son who was autistic, and um, she's a neurologist herself, a doctor. Um, her name is <laughs> Natasha Campbell McBride. It sounds Irish, but she's actually Russian. But She's uh, Russian? Yes, Oh, and, a very Irish uh, name. <laughs> and um, she uh, went out to search of what sh- sh- could she do with regards uh, medical wise and so on for her son and found um, solutions lacking in the conventional medical realm and then went uh, she also had studied nutrition so she went and looked at a nutritional protocol and long story short the child is now uh, in the full of the health well at, at third level university and she now uses the dietary protocol that she produced uh, for other parents with autistic children and for adults with autism um, and gets really good results Mm. Um, and in order, I mean it's complex, the protocol, but uh, she wrote the book in order to highlight it because um, well, she's in on data, she gets people from all over the world, really, America, Europe and so on, and she has a practice in Cambridge in England um, and is this book available here, Gabriel? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's available uh, worldwide now. And, I mean, you can always get it on Amazon.com uh, um, or w- one of the online bookstores, but it's it's widely available now. Mm. Um, and that's the second edition. Um, and, uh, can, what, what is she saying in the book, you know, when it's all to do with diet and foods? And Yeah, I'll try and break it down. As I say, it's a, it's a little complex, but um, it's basically a, a dietary protocol, a natural approach to autism, uh, AD, ADD, uh, hyperactivity disorder, attention deficit disorder. Autism, uh, dyslexia. Yeah, and, and it extends on to schizophrenia, depression, asthma, allergies, and so on. So it's actually quite a, a broad uh, spectrum, but specifically more so developed for people with uh, neurological um, conditions like autism and so on, and the spectrum uh, of o- o- autism disorders which are on the increase uh, today and uh, basically um, I suppose to uh, cut the diet down it's how I've been aware of the diet for over 10 years uh, for different reasons that it's actually uh, um, good for digestive health so things like IBS, inflammatory bowel disease celiac disease and so on that's how I started researching a long time ago Um, It was developed, uh, to go back a bit further, it was developed by uh, a doctor in New York in the 50s um, Mm. for uh, children with celiac disease. And at the time, celiac disease uh, uh, was killing uh, a lot of children that failed to thrive and to die. Um, And so she really kind of took that... Uh, from that basis um, a number of years ago and kind of developed it a little bit and now uses it for autism but uh, it mainly takes out um, foods that damage the gut lining so of our digestive tract Um, and her um, uh, hypothesis is that people with uh, autism and um, neurological conditions similar to that ADD, ADHD and so on mainly children these days but uh, they have digestive problems Mm. now this is true, this is a medical fact that a lot of autistic children also have digestive problems Um, uh, she feels it's related and it's that their gut lining is um, damaged Um, so um, food particles that generally wouldn't get absorbed into the gut line and into the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. It normally, it'd normally pass through uh, do, And um, because they do, when they get into the bloodstream, 
they then go and cross the blood brain barrier into the brain so long story short certain food particles um get into the system the blood system and get into the brain and then cause problems and these food particles when when it breaks it down on a molecular level they're glucomorphines uh, caseinomorphines and they're very similar to um opioids like morphine and uh, heroin and stuff like this the, and you can get food metabolites that do mimic that in the brain and bind to, to opioid receptors i mean this is well known but uh, in these susceptible individuals um it crosses the blood brain barrier and can cause problems um that you see in in people with autism so really that's the basis for the diet and the diet is cutting out these foods that can uh, first damage the digestive tract and then cross over the digestive yeah. barrier into and the... what kind of foods are we talking about? Are we talking about processed foods or what are we talking about? Yeah, in general processed foods, but more specifically, I guess to break it down, is to cut out all grains and sugars um, and for a period of time, dairy as well, because uh, um, the grains have... Uh, certain complex proteins gluten is quite a, a common one that a lot of people would know of in Ireland uh, uh, would be the cause of celiac disease but they have other ones um, and these complex proteins are the ones that cross over the gut barrier into the mm-hmm. bloodstream uh, in the likes of dairy this, uh, the protein is casein uh, and so for a period of time it's to cut these out and to increase more nourishing foods that don't uh, create these problems. Um, uh, sugar is also one that's out. Um, and um, so mainly, I guess, on a high level, uh, I mean, it's more technical, but on a high level, sugars and grains. And when you cut these out, you're really cutting out a lot of processed foods as well. Um, so processed sugars and sweeteners and, and additives and, and colorants and all these artificial things that we have in the food chain, okay. it, it cuts it out. Now, it's not easy, but uh, sometimes they all, uh, it's, it's a good because there may, may not be an alternative. Mm. I mean, that's her, her position. So. But these are good for people's general health anyway, though, that Definitely. type of advice. And as I say, there's recipes in this book yes, as well. Yes, uh, I mean, the new edition, she had a, an older edition and people found it very hard to follow. Um, and so the newer edition, I think she put in more recipes and um, how to start the diet, how to kind of prepare your kitchen, what foods to buy and so on. Okay. Um, and make it easier. Because, I mean, it's not easy for a parent... Um, with an autistic child having to go and uh, and really cook a different way um, but uh, as she says is that it's um, really there, there there wasn't much alternative for her uh, yeah. and it um, not only improved the situation for her child but it actually reversed it which is quite amazing really when you look at the, the that whole area of medicine today um, for autism ADD and so on and um it's it's a full dietary protocol. She does mention sub, some supplements in there, like probiotic again for digestive tract mm. uh, probiotics, which are you get in, in a good quality yogurt. Yeah, and um, a lot of these recipes are suitable to all, for all the family. Like, I mean, there's fish pie in it and everything, and applesauce and yeah. Loads what she of fa- yeah, what she found is generally when um, you know there's seldom just the one child, there's a, a few, and it's the full family, and it's it's easier to cook the same foods for all the family then just cook for the family and then cook specially mm. for one child or one person or, or whatever so she's kind of made it that uh, everyone in the family can go on it <laughs> um, so everyone can, to, can to make it, it easier to mm. implement well, there's I guess. meatballs stuffed peppers there's a, there's a fish soup uh, winter squash soup so so there's loads and, and the book is called Gut and Psychology Syndrome and it's by Dr. Natasha Campbell um, McBragg and as you say it's it's in all good bookshops. It is, yeah, and they can order it if they don't have it, you know. Okay, now uh, I ask Gabriel, can can herbs help someone who grinds their teeth badly in their sleep? Yeah, bruxism is the medical term for for that grinding of teeth while asleep. And um, uh, I have used herbs uh, with people for bruxism with success. Um, And it's generally linked to the nervous system. So we use nervine tonics, the class of herbal medicines that are called nervine tonics. So that's um, like the hypercum, St. John's wort, lemon balm, uh, chamomile, uh, vervain, 
valerian uh, all the ones we'd actually use for good quality sleep and for anxiety or panic attacks and that to a certain extent as well we'd use for bruxism and um Mag- on on a supplement uh, side of it, magnesium is good too, and and to cut out stimulants. So really, nur- nourish the nervous system here. So herbal medicines that are good for the nervous system, uh, yeah. and anything that's adverse to the nervous system that stimulates. So that's uh, you know caffeine, alcohol, sugar. Uh, I cut down on them, and um, uh, the and then in time, I mean, it's generally something that's been there a long time. Usually the person isn't aware of it. Their dentist says, you know, there's um, loss of enamel or dentin here. You are you must be grinding your teeth at night. That's usually mm-hmm. how it's picked up. It's not that they are aware Bad of it. Hygiene or anything um, like that. And uh, uh, the current approach is that you wear a, a mouth shield, like a boxer puts it on before a boxing fight. You just put it on before bed. And it can be uncomfortable. It takes a bit of getting used to, but does save the teeth. Okay. Um, on a herbal medicines perspective, we 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 appro- approach it by nervine tonics. All right, uh, Bell's palsy in an adult. In yeah, um, it's it's a difficult one. Again, it's it's a nervous system or neurological uh, thing where there's um, partial paralysis, uh, either in the face or a part of the body. Um, Again, certain nervine tonics or, or herbs that nourish the nervous system can be of benefit. Uh, general dietary recommendations for any of Bell's palsy are important in my opinion because uh, I'm definitely aware of a couple of chemicals that are added to food, artificial sweeteners, that in some individuals in the States have caused Bell's palsy and then when they remove them, uh, the palsy improves over time. Um, so a consultation uh, is best for that person and okay. a full case history, medical history um, and So you'd need to, to really talk to them directly sure, yeah. Okay, a lot of pains in legs even to kneel down is painful uh, more so in the morning, only in 30s what could that be? Mm. So I was, I was going to say before I heard only in 30s would it be vargas veins uh, in poor circulation into the legs um, you'll get symptoms like that but for a 30 year old it still can be uh, vargas veins but uh, less likely um, I'm not too sure uh, I mean again are they exercising a lot um, uh, you know if you exercise a lot obviously you'll get kind of uh, muscular pains but um um, I'm just thinking uh, on on electrolytes. Sometimes people who are, who are dehydrated, say after exercise, also can get these cramps and pains in the muscles in the legs, and it's it's due to electrolyte deficiency. So making sure they're getting them um, adequate liquids, uh, salts, um, and general minerals. You know, uh, full trace trace elements and minerals. Okay. Um, Again, probably more information needed on that one. Okay. All right. Now, we have a lot of questions. So what we're going to do, we'll keep them until you're back with us again in, in uh, two weeks' time when we start with the questions. And thanks to the people um, who sent that in. But it was important to talk about uh, your, your your training and, and, and that uh, particular book, uh, Gut and Psychology Syndrome, by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. Uh, Gabriel McSharry, medical herbalist and nutritionist. Thanks for coming in this morning. We'll talk to you in two weeks' time. Thanks, Barbara. Gabriel McSharry, nutritionist and medical herbalist. A safe and effective approach to your health condition. Call the clinic on 071-9142-940.